Good morning and welcome to another Match Masterclass where we are demonstrating a method that you simply cannot ignore when the weather starts to get colder. So what am I on about then when I say a method you cannot ignore when the weather gets colder? It pains me to say it, but perhaps the best fishing is gone and left us now. And you really cannot, in my opinion, if you want to compete in matches, just be out and out aggressive and trying to catch big weights of carp all the while. So in today's video, hopefully we're going to demonstrate what method I use to just catch absolutely everything. And that is normally for me, I class it as a throwaway line, but it's fishing maggots, short, nice and light, and just trying to catch absolutely anything. There is no doubt that in the middle period, normally in matches, you get a quiet spell. So you can have a good first hour, you can normally have a good last hour, and I would still have my carp lines for those, but, things that have been really productive for me is just having a line like this, fishing light, trying to catch absolutely anything and keep your weight ticking over in those quieter periods. So I'm going to get into the session now, start fishing away on this short line and we'll be able to demonstrate the baits, the rigs and the approach that I go through to just try and keep myself in touch and catching fish throughout those quieter periods. Well, there we go, our first bite of the session and a little roach. So that is perfect, as what I was saying is you are just looking to catch absolutely anything. So I'm gonna get that one put into the keep there and we'll see what else is out there. Now, the good thing about this is you are catching, well, certainly fishing maggots are nice and light. You can catch pretty much anything that swims but you are also i mean i say this hopefully you're going to catch some bonus carp on it as well because it's the kind of baits that they're looking to eat this time of year and we're actually fishing today at broom pits it's a lake that personally i have never ever fished so i don't actually know what's in here but that's another roach and this is what we want we want to just be putting weight in this net consistently so i'm almost what you've got to pretend here is that we are say you've fished your first hour and you caught a few carp there's always a few bonus carp that i call them the stupid ones that feed at the start of the match they're always available so i don't really start on this line but i prime it i'm feeding bait all the while and because it is maggots and everything eats them you can be a little bit more aggressive but you can feed them quite regularly so while you're fishing your other lines, like I said, perhaps the first hour, maybe two hours, and obviously if you, if you catch on it, carry on fishing on that line because you, why would you come off it? But I, I just don't believe in many situations that you find yourself catching for the full five hours. There's always quiet periods, and that's when this line for me comes into play. I'm not disrupting anywhere else, so just do it nice and short. I throw it to hand, missed the bite there, and I fish it in that style. So a little bit about how I'm fishing it while I'm doing it. So you can see I'm throwing maggots. My rig reflects that and I'll come onto the rig a bit later. But what I wanna do is I wanna try and keep a little bit of movement into my rig. So what you'll see is I've, I've flicked out there a few seconds ago. I'm letting it settle. And I'm now letting it fish and I'll probably leave it here like this for 20 30 seconds that may go a bit longer we just sort of feel your way into session but like i said i've never fished it so i don't really know what to expect or if there's bonus fish to be caught but ooh, a little bite there missed it but that's probably as long as i'd wait and i'd lay it in again now laying it in because i'm feeding maggots by hand you can get bites 
through the water. And that's where I just think being proactive, working at it, trying to catch absolutely anything. Because a lot of roach, certainly those first couple of roach were quite quick. And I think they're coming as the bait's settling, they're snatching hold of it. And if I can put together, I don't know, hopefully, like I said, I'm gonna catch some, some bonus fish on this as well. But certainly in a match situation, most venues now have all sorts of different species of fish in. And if you can put, what should we say, even like 10, 15 pound extra on top of the carp that you're gonna catch anyway, then obviously it makes a big, big difference. Oh, didn't even get a bite there, what have we got? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I said this rig and method catches absolutely everything, but I didn't mean crayfish. <laughs> oh no. Typical, don't bite me. Ow, he bit me. Right, um, let's just pop that down there. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> there you go, that's how effective it is. It does literally catch everything. Let's try it one more time. We go, that might have been why it's gone a little bit quieter. And also, if it does go quieter, it can sometimes mean that there's a bonus fish in your peg. And there's certainly something I would do that I'll come on to later to inspect that but because you know we're just feeling our way in at the moment we're just going to keep the bait going in and like i said catch absolutely anything hopefully there's some might be some skimmers might be some bream oh i missed another bite there certainly a few fish now coming into the area and you know people have said that there's a few carp in here as well so let's pray we catch some of those but the main thing about it and what i keep going on about is just tick yourself over keep putting weight in your net when oh that's not a roach that's a carp <laughs> and that is what i'm on about so i mean minus the crayfish obviously because that wasn't expected we've caught a couple of roach missed a few bites and because i'm feeding maggots absolutely everything eats it as i keep mentioning you sort of do catch your carp. This is going mental. Oh dear, we're in trouble here. <laughs> One thing I must say is if fish really, really light because you are just fishing for bites. So don't sort of, don't panic when you've hooked yourself a carp. Take your time with it because during those slow periods, on top of your bits and pieces you're catching, these and a bonus fish you're praying for. So I'm gonna take my time here and get this in, hopefully. And if we can, we'll show you this one and then we'll have a little bit of a detailed look about the rig, because that is also very important. You would be nice. So that is a bonus and that's the beautiful thing about fishing this way is you can still pick up a bonus fish as well it's quite shallow close in but it deepens off quite quickly so <laughs> so that one proved a bit of a, a pain to get up right in this marginal shelf but it's one that is well worth a look at it's quite clear water in here which means they go quite a nice dark colour. That is a proper fish, isn't it? I want to give myself for that probably six pound, seven pound, maybe something like that. Six pound, let's go six pound. But like I said, so we haven't been fishing long. We had those couple of roach, we went a little bit quiet, apart from the crayfish, and then carp comes in as well. So if it does go quiet, don't always think that there's not enough fish there to catch. It could be. That there's one of these sitting there. So what I'm going to do is get that one slip nicely in the net. So I've got a carp net here and a silvers net. That's going to go in there. And then we'll have a little look at the rig because that is very important as well. So taking a look at the rig itself, again, has to reflect what you're trying to achieve. Because we're fishing for absolutely anything, we're trying to keep weight going on net. Everything is now scaled down. And like I said, it really does pain me to say it, but I just think... The, the best fishing's behind us and you've got to fish a little bit neater and a little bit smarter. So rig wise reflects that. Now elastic, that's the first thing. This is orange slick. It's 
fine for catching smaller fish like roach, but also, as you've just seen, I can land decent fish on it as well. So really confident that that does everything I need it to do. Main line itself is 012, so that's quite light for me. I tend to fish relatively heavy, but with this, I just wanna be really nice and finessed and catch whatever there is in my peg. And the float reflects that as well. It's really light, it's a 0.3 gram, which in this depth of water, I've probably got four, four and a half foot. It's probably a little bit lighter than I would normally fish. And it has got a carbon stem. Again, ridiculously important because like I said, some of these bites are gonna come through the water. Because we're feeding by hand, as the bait is dropping through the water, I can see bites as it comes through. The two shot just here are just trimming shot just to make sure it's shotted nicely. I literally have it down to a little pimple because I wanna see every single bite there is out there. And the shotting pattern, I have got it towards the bottom half of my rig, but it's just spaced out number 10s. And that is just to create a nice slow fall and try and imitate and try and get fish to grab it, a freebie as it's going down there. Onto a short hook link, four inch hook link is pretty standard for me. I fish that most of the time. That again is 012 and the hook is a very small but reliable size 18. So basically in essence, what it is I'm trying to achieve is finesse and trying to just catch everything. I know I keep saying it, but it's really, really important. Single maggot, that's all I'm going for. And then let's see if there's anything out there. As I was talking to you, I was just throwing in the odd pinch of maggots. So I, I tend to fish it at this distance because it's just comfortable for me where I throw it. So wherever you feel comfortable throwing maggots, that is probably sort of, you know, as long as depths and venues allow, that's where I would fish. And for me, it's normally top kit plus three sections. It's just what I've got used to over the years for thrower maggots and I can be relatively accurate. I don't, I'm not too worried about being on a real tiny dinner plate because I do want to be catching fish throughout my swim, through the water. You can catch them just off your maggots. But as long as you are relatively accurate, then that's the way to fish it. So that's the rig. I've already talked to you about how we're fishing it, where we're just lowering it through, giving it 20 to 30 seconds, repeating that process. I think that carp has probably scared him off a little bit. So it might take me a little while to build it back up. And that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna keep trickling a few maggots in over the top, keep lowering my rig in. I'm sure it's not gonna be too long before at least putting something back in that keep net. that is another nice bonus fish and like I said if you can keep ticking over in between those it's a real good way of doing it it's one of my favorite methods like I said I do use it as a bit of a throwaway method in the quieter times but let's talk bait now I've got it here in my hands I've said it from the start I think maggots are probably the best thing you can do this with to just catch anything that's in your lake I don't really know what's in here at the moment we've had some skimmers or a skimmer we've had some few roach and then a couple of carp as well. So it's a good little way of doing it. But if you follow the match mask class, you probably know me by now. If you look at these maggots, they are not just ordinary maggots. Now, they are obviously normal maggots when I buy them, but what I do is I do like to flavor them up. I'm just gonna keep topping up the swim because it is important to keep this active, this method. But in here, you can probably see that there is additional flavors to them. Now. What I do first of all is get myself a carrier bag or a plastic bag, I'll empty my maggots in there and then I add this liquid here, which is Dynamite Tiger Sweet Liquid. You do need to be really careful when you're adding liquids to maggots. If the liquid is really water-based, 
they tend to try and gasp air and you make your maggots float. So you've got to be very careful, but this is actually quite a thick syrupy liquid and I find this one works really well. So what I do is I'll put a good little glug of that into the bag and then shake it up to coat all of the maggots in that really sticky syrupy liquid. And then in the same flavor, here we go, the big fish tiger nut gram bait again. What you do is then, once they've got a coating of liquid on, in the same bag, put a good helping of the gram bait in there, and again, shake it all over it. Now, what that's gonna do is the liquid's gonna stick to the maggots, the gram bait's gonna stick to that, and then you get like an enhanced maggot than rather than just sort of your standard maggots out of the bait tub. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm under no illusion that this isn't washing off and falling through the water column as and when you're fishing, but I think that's good because it just creates a big flavor column all the way in your swim. And that's why you again, and going back to it, you can catch fish through the water. So I'm lifting my rig in a lot and moving it around. The only other thing I have got is the F1 Sweet Expanders. I've done these last night, standard expanders, six mil. And all I've got those for is you can often find, and we already have, when we've hooked those carp, your swim just goes a little bit quiet and you can almost predict that there's a carp there or there's something of some substance there. And it's worth having some expanders with you just to see if there is a bigger fish waiting around for it. And like I said, those are my favorite expanders. I might even try that in a moment, depending on if that carp's upset it, but I'm, just, I'm gonna give it another go on the maggot because it, it's just for me, that is the one. There we go, another roach. Like I said, it, it seems to be like you catch these, catch these, Oh, that's terrible, what a miss. That was a better swing. Catch a few of these, it goes quiet, and then you catch yourself a carp. So that is why I have those baits. You can do it with corn as well. You can put a bit of corn on, and again, try and catch a bonus fish. But just, these are kind of baits that you probably will have with you anyway, because like I said, this probably wouldn't be my main attack in a match situation. This would be for when it's quiet and you just want to keep putting weight in your net. So you'll have mag, sorry, you'll have, no, oh, bounce out of that. You'll have pellets, you'll have corn, you might have some meat with you, you know, anything that you could just go over this line with when the, the bites slow up, just to see if there's a bonus fish there. The two fish that we, bonus fish that we have caught already, what's this? It's quite good here, because I don't know what's in, I don't know what this is gonna be. But the, yeah, the two bonus fish we have caught already, have just been on on maggots. There we go, that's a nice little skimmer. And again, this is where you can just keep plodding away, keep putting waiting. Yeah, I don't know how long I've just been talking to you there, but what's that? Is that one or two roach, a little skimmer? You yeah, know, we're probably talking, getting towards half a pound probably, all, all like combines. And that was be, if I'm still sitting there now, waiting for, I don't know, one or two carp here and there, you can see what I mean, but I'm saying this just, for me, you can't ignore this method. And that is what I've been doing recently to good success when it's quiet. So the plan is to fish away. Now I've shown you the rigs, the baits, the way I lay the rig in, fish it through the water, keep it nice and active. I'm not gonna fish for too long because I'll probably only be doing this a couple of hours in a match, maybe even an hour in a match just to, to tick over. So I'll probably replicate that, see what we catch, perhaps slick a pellet on in a little while and see if there's a couple of bonus fish there. But yeah, as I said, it's a very, very good way to keep yourself up towards the top of the leaderboard, if not winning a match by catching fish that other people aren't fishing for. <laughs> that one went mental when I hooked it, but it's been a good little 
session fishing to be honest with you and actually the carp have had a bit more of a feed than I expect them to. This sunlight is horrific. I cannot see a thing that's going on, so apologies for that. But yeah, technically, as I've been saying, like I'm not solely fishing for carp, yet I'm still catching them. So that's the beauty of it, is you can fish for absolutely everything. But because it is so neat, it is so finessed, you know, your rigs are small, your hooks are smaller, and I think you just catch those carp that potentially you wouldn't have caught if you were still in the, the warmer weather mode of all out attack, feeding loads of bait, perhaps like the pellets, the summer baits, meat, stuff like that, that they might not quite be as obliging to eat than these flavored maggots. So yeah, it's been a very good little day. I'm gonna get this one in the net and then we will have a look at what we've caught. One to finish it. Let's let these go then. I think in this net, silvers, we've probably got about a carp's worth of silver fish. So that was what I was on about, about fishing for anything. But realistically, and like I said, unexpectedly, the carp had a bit of a feed so it was well worth having that nice little re neat rig and a pretty successful few hours fishing so i hope you've enjoyed it let us know oh go on buddy he's wrapping his. let us know if you are out there using that method as well drop us a comment don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you very soon on the next one